Hello, and welcome to The House Files, a podcast about building a triplex in Portland, Oregon. Which primarily exists to talk you out of doing such a thing. So it's been a while since we've done an episode. It has been a while. We didn't actually publish any episodes in May, and I feel bad about that. Well, things were very slow for a while. There wasn't a lot to show off. And then, all of a sudden, we realized, actually, we have a lot to catch you up on. Yeah, well, also, I was traveling for a couple trips in May, and one thing left to another. Anyway, yeah, it, it all kind of piled up, and there's a ton of stuff to go look at now. But it's all been happening very slowly. Um, so we thought we would take you on a little walk around the inside and point out what's been going on. Inside and the outside, because there's some new stuff on the outside, too, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. All so, right. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So uh, this is the biggest change. We have doors now with locks. These are not the final doors. These right. are for security. They are temporary doors. Very, uh, actually, very cheap material, but they're a functional door, and I put on a functional electronic lock. Aaron and his quest against keys. Yes. Uh, well, it's very important for the contractors to be able to get in whenever they want, and now they can just text each other the codes. Um, other big thing that's been happening on the outside is this whole situation. This is the waterproofing layer. So there's this material here. There's the stuff that goes under the window frame. These little strips uh, all the way around the house. The whole so thing everybody is that was so stressed about how wet it was inside yep. will show you how much drier it is now. Yep, and not just because it stopped raining. <laughs> um, so they've been working on that, wrapping the entire house. Uh, you can see they're not quite done with uh, over that door, and uh, they've been putting in all the windows and doors now too. So that's been part of the part of this waterproofing siding. Project. And these are their real windows, not the not temporary right. windows. These are real windows. Um, They're very so, expensive. Yeah, very expensive. <laughs> uh, it's been going so all the way around. And then uh, this is new, the little frame for the sprinkler room. So it's not finished, obviously, but that is where the sprinkler system is going to get all the valves for the sprinkler system go into that. There'll be a door on it also. Uh, I don't know what that it's is. It's a trash can <laughs> holder right now. <laughs> um, and I don't quite understand their plan for finishing the roof lines. Um, to make it work with the other roof, but I trust them to do the right thing. Um, so I think th that's it. I think that's it on the outside. Oh, on this side, let's go to the uh, let's go around the other side because there's the dumbwaiter shaft. So this this is probably one of the most silly parts of the entire project is that we have this dumbwaiter, um, and the dumbwaiter shaft had to be. How many hours rated? It's a two hour fire rated wall. Uh, on, and the tricky thing about this is that, if you remember before, the, it was just that wall was the, is the outside of the building. And this was all built later. So if we look up, it goes all the way up to the rooftop deck. And in order to build this as a two hour fire rated wall, it needs to have drywall on the inside, which you might be thinking, that seems weird to have drywall when on the outside of a house, when the rest of the house isn't even done yet. And yes, it's because if they didn't do it now, they're not gonna go and climb into this later and put in drywall up a 30 foot tall tunnel. <laughs> so they had to do it in, in pieces and build it, kind of build it as a finished thing in place. There's also like in, insulation behind there too. I think when this is all said and done, I think the contractor might hate us the most for this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the dumbwaiter has been the least favorite part of the project, but it's gonna be so cool. <laughs> it's going to be so cool. Okay, also out here, let me back up. Also on the outside here, so that's the dumbwaiter entrance. There's this, which is a new little thing that I wanted to do. So that's a little shed. It's not in the original plans. It is just on, tacked onto the side of the building, and it's there to house two things. On the right side, there's going to be a bunch of network gear up in the corner for uh, running the cameras and feeding the other units, uh, and that's where, like, if someone ever wanted cable, they would run the cable box into here. On the left side is just a shed to store yard tools because we don't have anywhere else to put them. Uh, so that is now where yard tools go. Maybe instead of yard tools, it can st store solar panels. Maybe it can store solar panels. You're right. It's just about big enough. Um, and the other thing that happened back here is where I'm standing, which this driveway is all now dug out to the proper street level. So now it's street level and this it will eventually be 
the bike storage. So it's going to get dug out to back there, and then that's going to get built back up with sort of caves underneath to stash bikes. And now this whole thing is at the, the driveway level, uh, and we'll build the steps back up. This was a fun project to watch them do. They just had the tiny little backhoe out here scooping things and trying to break up the concrete. Um, and they, they made a lot of progress in just like a couple of days. Something I've been curious about, but I'm not actually sure if we can, is you know how sometimes on the side of uh, stairs, they have like a little ramp so you can push things with wheels up, yeah. like strollers or yeah. bikes. I was wondering if we could do that on the stairs up here. I want to do it on, on all the steps. It either either on the side or in the middle, like a uh, uh, flat. Yeah, track. the middle is nice when you have panniers on. Mm -hmm. So I I've seen them double a lot of the time yeah. for strollers. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. Okay, so that's the outside update. Let's walk around hey. the inside. Hello, welcome to the inside of the house. Um, so the big change is that these windows and doors now exist. Yeah, and uh, nice hollow doors that we'll fix up later. Uh, that one, I guess, is... I don't know where that one goes. I don't know, but this this is mainly, like, the reason there's so much random stuff in here is for job site safety, less stuff getting yeah. stolen. Um, they usually leave a little bit cleaner than this. So one of the things that we did uh, was the low-voltage guy came, and I uh, walked through with him and see where it says cam. We wrote... Uh, wrote on the walls where all the low voltage stuff goes. So there's going to be an Ethernet jack for a camera there. I actually put, I went out and I actually bought this little box for the low voltage stuff, which is going to live there, and that's for the door system. Um, so we walked through, figured out all that. Server room is going to be under here. Um, and, oh yes, the dumb waiter is now cut out from the inside of the office. So now you can see how that's going to work. So just open right now, but it's so cool. It's so cool. Um, they still haven't swapped the windows, right? Uh, they did. So oh, they did. that is now done. So your window there is, see how there's like the little frame down here that looks like different wood? So that's the new wood. And then it's a smaller window now. So that is... I thought it, I was going to have a bigger window here, so that it's a window seat. Now it's not a window seat. Interesting. So we also met with the electrician and didn't really do much on site with the electrician, but did uh, chat with him. And uh, then I went and made a plan for where all the lights and outlets go. And it's really a lot. Uh, but one of the other uh, things was actually through this wall in unit B. This is, um, so that, that's the window that was in your office. Yeah. Um, I want that window. <laughs> it's a little, little late to change it again. Um, so we had to figure out where all the heating uh, mini splits go. And that was one of the walkthroughs with the, the HVAC guy. So down here, we're going to do, where was it? So one is in the bedroom. It's going to be in... I think we marked the floor. Yeah, that's what that is. HVAC, so it's gonna be up on the ceiling up there for the bedroom. And then the one for this room is actually gonna be above that closet. It's gonna be like on the front face of that closet. They're gonna build the closet a little bit higher so there's more room for it. And that'll heat and cool this whole main space. And then the other one goes in this bedroom, which this one was interesting because there's actually not a lot of room um, of options, and we ended up deciding to put it up here between the two doors. Um, the big constraint with placing the HVAC is how you run the pipes to it. So it needs the coolant line and the drainage line from the compressor. And these are three zone mini splits, and all the compressors are going to hang off of the back wall, the north wall, it was, which was also required a phone call to the inspector. Randy called the inspector while we were all here and was like, is it okay to hang compressors off of the wall because it'll be inside of the setback area? It's within the five feet to the property line. And the inspector said yes. Oh, interesting. So that makes it, that's great because basically it means that we can put 
the compressors attached to the, the building outside down on the ground floor so they're easy to do maintenance on. And then that, we just need to figure out how to run so pipes. That's why so many apartment buildings have them out there. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then it's a matter of running pipes to that back wall from everything. So from up here, we can go through this channel uh, from this one's, this one's kind of a trick. There's actually no, uh, there's no way to go inside the wall because that you can't go through that steel beam. So they're going to have to run it on the surface inside of a little soffit that's going to stick out. So I told him that we'll, we'll um, do a soffit all the way around and make it an LED strip all the way around. That I'm just going to say, cool. this window would have been perfect for a window seat. <laughs> this is the right height for a window seat. Um. <laughs> Why didn't they just leave it that way? Because the plans? The plans were wrong. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that I did after our stair episode is I actually drew the sketches for it. So I'll have to show the, the renderings of it, but that's for the uh, slats of wood that go all the way up that make the railing there and in between for the down that way. So that's uh, sent off to the builder and um, he was like, I think we can do it. So I don't think there's anything much new up here. The cutout for the dumbwaiter is up here, but oh, we did figure, we do have to decide. I think I know where the mini split's gonna go, but I'm not 100% on it. So we're gonna have cabinets, upper cabinets, you know, all the way around there, but they end right before the dumbwaiter. So the mini split's gonna go above the door of the dumbwaiter. What do you think about that? Above the door to the dumbwaiter? Yeah. So next to the dish rack, essentially. Basically, straight above that door, because nothing's above that door right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's fine. It's either there or the other, the other option would be all the way over here, above the bedroom door, which feels a little bit kind of tucked away. Do we only have one mini split in this unit? No, there's three, but there's one okay. for this space. Oh, OK. It's one per like zone. Um, I think that all the heat is going to get generated in the kitchen, so. So you want to cool it off in the kitchen too? Yeah. Um, that, that, was their, that was their idea. I think the original plans have it over here by the door, but it seems really far away to, to reach this whole area. Yeah, including... although this window is big window, so. It is a big window. All right. Anything else? Um, oh, I did notice that one of the shower pans arrived for the bathroom. I don't know why the rest of them are not here, but the, we're not doing shower pan for our bathroom where it's going to be built, built here, but the lower units do get shower pans, which apparently saved us a lot of money. So that's nice. I thought we were using a shower pan for ours too. Nope. Because we have the circular door. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, the pans, they arrived and they are here. Can we look at them? We can go look at them. Go through the wall. Oh, there it is. So it's just in this package. Oh, it'll be just as hard to clean as ours. <laughs> At least it's black. Though. But it's it's uh, it's not textured, right? Like ours? It is textured. No, no, no. It's 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 a it's different. Shiny. It's a different it's annoying got texture. Big bumps, not the tiny little yeah. uh, grippy bumps. I'm sure it'll be just as annoying to clean, but. Um, yeah. So next, I guess we they're gonna finish doing all the the outdoor and they put the actual siding on after they finish the furring strips, and then it'll be actually waterproof. Oh, they cut this pipe out away. Oh, yeah. That was uh, the old location for that wall, and they fixed that. Oh, it looks very safe. <laughs> uh, houses are solid, I swear. <laughs> it's a giant pile of sawdust. They, they try to clean. They keep it clean. Um, yeah. 
All right. That's about it for now. Um, hopefully things start making more progress soon and we have more updates. Yeah. But until then. Go build a tripod. <laughs>